Thank you, Madam President. Speaking to the committee amendments. Senator has the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would hope the body would adopt the committee amendments and therefore put the floor substitute out of, out of order so we can get on with the bill. Um, I think in debating these teacher compensation issues, I think it's important to remember sort of how we got here. Uh, my, my mother, I'm a 13th generation Virginian on one side of my family. My mother was the first person in our family to actually, on the Virginia side of my family, to actually attend a government funded school. It only took 12 generations. My grandfather went to a one room school. His uh, family had to throw in money to pay for the teacher. They didn't have school past eighth grade in Franklin County back then. He couldn't go to high school. My grandmother had this exact same experience. My grandfather had to pay for her to go what was then called the Fairham Training Academy, which is a private high school in Franklin County at the time. Now it's a college. Because there was no public school system in Franklin County. People would pitch in to hire a teacher, and they'd walk to the cabin, and that's, everybody would get their, their education together. This state, this state has a long, long history of refusing to fund public education, of it not being a priority for a lot of different reasons, which I'm not going to get into. The legacy of that, the legacy of that is partly what we are facing today with regard to these numbers. Our state today, notwithstanding our failure to invest in public education for generations, our state today has a median family income of number 10 in America of all the states. We have the 10th highest median income. We are in actually a very relatively wealthy state. However, the state of West Virginia, which is 49th in median family income, according to JLARC, somehow finds the means to spend 25% more per child than we do. That's shameful. And everybody here ought to be ashamed that we have allowed that to fester for so long. We've allowed our public education system to not receive the funding to the level of services that our constituents demand and deserve, given the relative prosperity in this state. And I don't know why the NEA's methodology is different. Maybe they just take all the counties and they run an average. Maybe the North administration looked at all the teachers, and because there happens to be a lot more teachers in Northern Virginia, that weights the average up, as opposed to looking at it by county, which would bring it down. I'm not really sure what the answer is, but I will tell you that if the NEA happens to be a little, a little high every year, that's a good thing, because it'll make us aim to where we are, where we should be, based on how wealthy our state is. If anything, I think this bill shoots low. It shoots lower than actually than where we should be. We should be trying to aim to pay our teachers relative to our wealth. That would be, I think, policy that we would all, that would, that would honor the legacy of our state and help make up for centuries, centuries of failure to invest in public education. And I would hope we would adopt these amendments so we can reject the floor sub. 